Well, thank you very much for um, for that uh, um, input. I'd like to now move to Ms. Roni Goldberg. And um, maybe you could just tell us how the business community see the effects of the financial um, crisis and the policies implemented by governments between 20, 2008 and 2010. What, in your view, was missing, and could governments have responded in a more effective way? Ah, <coughs> 2020 hindsight, or <laughs> hindsight is always 2020. Um, first of all, let me uh, say on, on behalf of my colleagues at USCIB and in the U.S. business community, but also if I can take the liberty of speaking on behalf of business at the ILO in the form of the IOE, the International Organization for Employers, um, how much we appreciate and welcome um, the, uh, the hard work, the collaboration, and the excellent product uh, that the ILO and the World Bank uh, have brought to us. I, I think this is a great model of collaboration. It's a, um, uh, an example of how uh, intergovernmental institutions, even though they may not be the fastest moving um, creatures or institutions in the world, can mobilize uh, for timely uh, input. And more to the point, they've created a very useful uh, database. Uh, I think that's only beginning to, to be appreciated in terms of, of the many ways in, in which it will keep, as business people like to say, paying a dividend. So thank you. Um, in preparation for this and for your question, I um, looked back on uh, some material that we had from 2009, and in particular, I uh, found a, a speech that I gave um, in April of 2009 on the business uh, response to the crisis. And uh, several things leapt out at me from that. The first was how uh, profoundly existential that crisis was. Jose Manuel, I think you used the word panicky. Um, uh, to describe some of the government responses. I think it was more than panicky. There, I think in, in many respects there was a, a, a deep sense that not only did, did no, no one know what to do next, but that the very foundations of our economy, of our society, that were somehow threatened. So I, I don't think we can emphasize enough the, um, the context in which all this was happening and happening very fast. Um, secondly, um, I think we appreciated at the time how complicated not just the, the uh, causes of uh, the crisis or the crises were, but how complex and diverse their effects was were. Um, it wasn't uh, it, what, it didn't take us long to uh, come to the conclusion that one size isn't going to fit all. Um, I think from the very beginning there was a, a deep sense of, um, of how diverse not only the, uh, the causes, the impacts, but the um, uh, responses were going to have to be. Uh, thirdly, um, I think there was a very deep sense that only governments could, in the first instance, react. Um, the U.S. government, as everyone knows, reacted uh, quickly and, and massively um, in packages that were controversial, that were diverse, that had um, differing impacts that people can still argue about, the composition of them, uh, the, the effect of them, and so on. Um, but I think at the time, and I think really in the wisdom of hindsight, there's an appreciation that uh, this, this massive response was necessary. Um, I remember at the time the, uh, the mantra was that uh, the crisis response had to respond to the three T's, right? It had to be timely, uh, temporary, and what was the three, third T? Targeted. Targeted. Thank, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I'm like uh, Rick Perry, right? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Timely, targeted, and temporary. Um, so that was the third thing. 
But the the fourth thing, and, and what I'd like to spend a, a, just a couple minutes on, um, what, you asked me what the business messages were. And when I looked at what those messages were that, that uh, we were conveying in uh, 2009, I'm struck by how relevant they still are. Uh, I, I picked out five of them, and I'll, I'll just mention what those are. Uh, the first was um, our concern about protectionism, both trade and investment protectionism. Um, and that's, uh, that's a concern that our governments uh, echoed in the G20, uh, that our international institutions echoed. Um, and it's, it's a concern that's still alive today. Secondly, we were worried about small and medium enterprises. We were worried about them uh, not just because they were very vulnerable to uh, the impacts of, of, the, of the recession and the crisis and the collapse in consumer demand and so on and so forth, um, but because they are the engines. Um, I think uh, really very widely in the world of, of growth uh, and job creation. Um, and we were particularly worried about them with respect to a, a third uh, concern, which is liquidity uh, and the um, uh, uh, profound impact of uh, drying up of credit. This obviously affected markets and institutions and and companies of all sizes, but it was a particular concern um, for small and medium enterprises. And uh, just this week, uh, there came across my desk a, a press release about a new OECD study on uh, financing of small and medium enterprises, which indicates that it, this, this issue hasn't gone away. Um, fourthly, and perhaps I should have said this first, um, we were worried even then about uh, training and education and uh, the uh, importance of those things, not just to crisis response, but to having a uh, competitive work-ready uh, uh, workforce for the future. So this was a big theme um, in 2009, and I think it's, a, it's an even bigger theme now. Um, and finally, uh, we were concerned about the uh, uh, about social safety nets um, in the United States, this is a particular uh, concern for enterprises having to let go of employees who are going to lose their health insurance, um, which maybe is is uh, wasn't a, a factor so much in other countries, um, but the business community at the time uh, was and, and continues to be concerned um, about that issue. So let, let me leave it at that, having um, taken this trip down memory lane. 